a garage in Munich. This is where vintage fan Richard Orthuber guards his most precious treasure, an Amphicar model 770 built 50 years ago. Orthuber tells us that the basic idea behind Amphicar, designed by constructor Hans Trippel, was to create a car that could travel both on land and on water. Triple's idea was that driving over mountains wasn't as important as crossing rivers. He didn't see much need for off-roaders. He wanted a car for water and land. To drive on water, the Amphicar needed some very special extra features. That's the horn. These are the navigation lights, like you see on a motorboat. They're green and red, and enable distant ships to see which direction he's going in. To ensure the hood closes tight with the rubber seals, it is fixed in place using two square key locks. Construction constraints meant that only the rear wheels are powered, says Richard. All-wheel drive would have been ideal for getting out of the water, but if you get stuck, it also comes with a tow hook. Up front, it has a double floor, like any other boat, so your feet stay dry. The water that does come in at the front, plus the inevitable spray from waves, drains off quickly below, via the double floor, and into the bilge. At the back, there's a bilge pump to remove the water from the vessel. Richard then powers up the little four-cylinder engine, originally hailing from a Triumph Herald. Packing just 38 horsepower, the Autobahns are no place for the Amphicar. Slow country roads are far more up its alley. The Amphicar is practically a boat on wheels. It has a higher center of gravity, which means it's pretty vulnerable around bends. You just have to take it out onto the water, enthuses Richard. It's more boat than car. The four-speed transmission was taken from a Tempo Matador van. Then a water reverse gear was fitted. Today, Richard is motoring out on the Chiemsee in Bavaria. The moment the car hits the water and dives down at the front, I still get nervous every time. You always wonder whether it will sink or swim. It's all metal at the front and back and has bolts everywhere. If there's a leak anywhere, it'll go down like a rock. But it works every time, and that's fascinating. Just when you thought it was safe to back onto the water, a whole fleet of amphicars appears on the horizon. Richard is here at the lake to meet some other enthusiasts. They provide an extra surprise for tourists on the passenger boats. Steering is just like with a car, explains Richard, via the front wheels. With regular boats, you use rudders, and in this case, tires. But they work. The only thing that's different are the brakes. So, let's get moving. On the water, amphicars can reach up to 12 kilometers an hour. But even at such slow speeds, in Germany you need an extra motorboat license to drive this baby across lakes or rivers. Two hours later, land ahoy. The car is at a bit of an angle. Any water that has entered the boat during the journey should have run towards the back. Richard Orthuber wants to see whether the bilge pump is in action. And lo and behold. Another adventure that the Amphicar has survived unscathed. Richard couldn't imagine selling his prized possession. Maybe his daughters will take an interest one day. But for now, he'll keep on servicing it. The cars are gradually disappearing, he says. Most are now in collector's hands, but nobody's going to get his.